Community Church, and thanks for joining us today. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Let's welcome his presence with our songs. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for today, and we welcome your presence into our lives, into our homes, our cars, or wherever we're listening. Um, Lord, let your presence be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
this morning. Thank you so much for this time of worship that we just get to recharge and just connect with you. Thank you so much for your presence and for being with us. In Jesus' name. Well, aloha and good morning. Magandang umaga. Aloha kakayaka. Buenos dias. Welcome to New Hope Community Church where we love Jesus, disciple people, and serve the community. Welcome you guys to our graduation Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today we're going to take a special time to just uh, honor our graduates for our uh, 10 a.m. service. Uh, so please, if you could join, if you could support, bring a lay and um, love on and encourage and support our graduates. We would love to have you uh, join us. A um, couple of annou major announcements. The first is this, you guys, is that, hey, today starts our summer fun program called Art at the Park. So June 5th, drop off your keiki, 9.30 a.m. at uh, the Kahala Park right across between uh, Pueyo and Kilauea. Um, Look for the New Hope flags. Drop off your kids at 9.30 a.m. After you drop them off, get Starbucks, get Jamba Juice, get McDonald's, get coffee, whatever. And then you could head yourself to church so um, we could have a time where our kids could just be outside, learn about Jesus, have some fun. So make sure to drop them off at the park. And then after that, when church is done, Auntie Tammy and the team, Auntie Tiffany and the rest of the aunties, they will go ahead and uh, love on your kids. We'll give them water and snacks. So make sure to uh, avail yourselves of that, all right? And secondly is, um, uh, as summer is coming to close, hey, we are a praying church. I know there's been a lot of, uh, COVID has gotten back up again and a lot of things have, um, is happening on the world. So if you have a prayer request, make sure to fill that out. You can go to our website, newhopecommunity.tv slash prayer, or right now in the website, there's gonna be a pop-up uh, prayer tab where you could just fill in your prayer request. You could be anonymous, you could put your name. If, if you have a praise report where God healed or God delivered or God showed up and you showed out, uh, you could go ahead and fill that out as well. All right, so uh, those are our major announcements for this morning. So why don't we prepare our hearts for tithes and offering? And I just want to encourage us during this time, you guys, that this is not only a time of worship, but this is kind of like where rubber meets the road, where, you know, um, where our, our faith comes to life, where we, where we walk our talk. And if we say that God is good, and if we say that God is generous, and if we believe in 
um, investing in heavenly treasure, then I, I encourage you to continue to give generously, to walk the sign of obedience. This is the only instance in the Bible where God says, hey, test me in this area. Will I not open the floodgates of heaven? When you give unto the Lord, right? You, you, God's blessings, you, you press down, you shake it together, but the blessings of God would run over. You cannot outgive God. And remember that what you give here, it, it seeds into the kingdom of God and our mission here for New Hope Community Church. So thank you for being partners in the gospel. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this morning, O oh Lord God, where we get to celebrate, Lord, our uh, graduates. And so, Father, I pray that as your spirit is working and stirring in our hearts, that you would um, prepare our hearts to hear your word. Oh, Lord, I ask, oh, Lord Jesus, that you would do a deep work within us, that our faith would be develop, developed, because your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. And so, Lord, be glorified, be lifted high, be honored in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today is uh, not only graduation Sunday, but we actually made it Youth Sunday. And we're going to have our youth director, uh, Patrick Machado, give just an amazing word on he, um, holding on to the promises of God, holding on to God himself. Um, and so just prepare your hearts and take a look. Well, hello and good morning, New Hope Community Church. My name is Patrick Machado. I am the youth director here in I luckily have the privilege of bringing you today's message here on Graduation Sunday. That's right, today we're going to be uh, honoring those that have graduated high school and college and even some um, college programs like becoming a firefighter. Uh, we are going to be honoring those people at our 10 a.m. service in person. And so if you're at home and you just couldn't make it to the 8 a.m., but you think you can run over and give a lay at the 10 a.m., uh, would love for you to join us. But well, let's jump into our word. I have a word today, uh, I believe, is for our graduates, but really is for everyone. And so we're going to be diving into Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. And if you have your Bibles, of course, you can bring that out. Maybe you have a an app on your phone or iPad, or you just don't have one yet and you're looking into getting a new Bible, um, the, the scripture will be on the screen. So uh, let's jump in and I'll read and you can follow along. In Isaiah 41, 10 through 13, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's key right there. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you, but will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and non-existent. Here, number 13, for I am the Lord your God who upholds you, um, upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Well, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Uh, we are here on a Sunday morning before your word, and we ask that you would speak to us, maybe reveal things, maybe things that we have been holding on, and you're saying, hey, I have a hold of you, give me whatever you have, and that we would lean into you today. And so may we glean from your word, may we uh, let our walls down, all expectations down, and just embrace a time with God and his word. May you help me deliver in such a way that it would not be a man here, but you, Lord, speaking through me to your people. We love you, God. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, uh, you may not know, but I actually have five kids now, all right, since since uh, last August, I have had five kids, but my four older kids, when they were one to two years old, still light enough to carry, um, there was something I would do. I would do something that I thought was funny and teaching them something, but others thought was mean, okay, but also funny. And what I would do is I would hold them, right, in my arms, and then I would slowly lean them back 
and see the <laughs> terror in their eyes, they would reach up and try to grab at me. And I would do that um, over and over again, and then I would let them kind of grab onto me and hold me tight. And I would whisper into their ear, um, never leave the Father or hold on to the Father, and cling to the Father. And of course, you might be thinking, oh, that's funny, or oh, that's wise. Uh, most people thought, wow, that's a mean dad. <laughs> And uh, um, really, it was just me trying to instill um, at such a young age, at one to two years old, and, and hopefully I'm still teaching this to them, that they must cling not just to us as parents, me and my wife, Rachel, but to God, to Jesus. Cling to Him in all things, especially when you feel like you're falling, maybe you're, you're struggling with something, when, when life isn't going your way, that when they become 18 going to college or into the workplace, that when they get older, they would lean into the Father, that they would hold on to Him. And this is uh, something that God is saying through the prophet Isaiah. He's saying to the people of Israel that are in exile in Babylon, he's telling them, I am here to encourage you. Let me tell you this, that I love you. You are my people, that I am with you, that I am going to take care of you. I am going to grab you by the right hand with my right hand, that you are not alone, that I am in control as your God. And he's laying this out, not only for the sake of his glory, but of course, for the benefit of his people. That, that he is making a promise to them that I have what's better for you than you know yourself. I offer you something more than the world offers you. And so as we graduate, as we celebrate our graduates, as we um, look to those ahead, right, and, and maybe you, know, you um, are moving away. Uh, we know that there's a graduate. He's going all the way to the other side of the United States in, ba um, in Massachusetts. And so he, he's going to be going to school there. All right? when, as he goes all the way over there, as he leaves home and he leaves his church family, that he would hold on to Jesus. The same is to say, say for all of us, no matter where we go, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what season we're transitioning to, that we would hold on to Him. Let me read Isaiah 41, 10 and 13 again in the ESV version this time, and where it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Very instructive, right? Do not fear, I am your God. Don't be dismayed, I am your God. Right? I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. All right? And so we need to just remember that. He is the God who holds us by his right hand that we stretch out to him. And as we know, whether it's season to season, like Pastor John shared last week, man, when things go wrong, it's easy to do wrong. My hope in this message, wherever you find yourself in transitions of life, that when things go wrong, you hold on to Jesus and you hold on to every promise that he has for you. That even though it's easy to do what's wrong in times of doing wrong, we would hold on to him. Whether we're here or at home or maybe we're at church or on the road, right? Definitely in traffic. Um, no matter where we find ourselves, that we would hold on to him. And so the heart of this message, if you're taking notes, you can fill in um, the blanks here. As God holds on to us, we hold on to Jesus and his eternal blessings. As God is holding on to us, we hold on to Jesus and his eternal blessings. And you might be saying, oh my gosh, I, I have graduated so many years ago. I, I don't even know what it's like to go from school to not school. Maybe for some of you, it's like, I never graduated high school. I never graduated college. I don't even know what it's like to graduate from that. What, what, what am I going to get from this word? I can tell you this much. The same as this is a major transition in their life from being a child or in a place of schooling 
to now a place of higher education or you know the workplace we all go through major transitions right and and we go from one place to another and that's i believe speaks to every season every season we are going to find ourselves um, asking three questions no matter what season it is so if you're graduating going to college if you're graduating going to the work field if you are um, going from one job to another if you are now becoming with no kids to one kid or two kids right and if you have twins whatever transition you find yourself man would you ask these questions because this is what I had to ask myself right now preparing this message who is holding on to me who's holding on to you Secondly, who am I holding on to? Who is the person I'm holding on to? And three, what am I holding on to? What are the things around me? What are the, what are the things in me that I'm holding on to? And so if you want to know what the title of this message is, guess what? It's hold on, all right? Hold on. Because what do we hold ourselves on to? And, and what's holding us? And when you realize who is holding you, when you realize who you are holding and what you are holding on to, man, what freer and beneficial life that Jesus has called us to that we can walk in. And so point one, it might be a shock to you. And of course, fill in the blank again. It might be a shock. Get ready for it. It's hold on to Jesus and the teaching of his word. Hold on to Jesus and the teaching of his word. Let's read this scripture here. Psalm 91, 14 through 16. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And you're like, well, who is, who's talking here? And, and really, it is um, the psalmist repeating promises from God. He's stating the promises of God out loud that, that I have freedom because God has told me he is going to free me. He is going to protect me. He is going to call me out of this. And this is a way um, where he is bonding himself to the promises of God. And this is something he's showing that we can do by even repeating the psalm itself that God is going to honor me. God is going to satisfy me. God is going to show me how to be rescued. His salvation is what's going to set me free. And so by holding on to Jesus and holding on to teachings like psalm here, the psalm, we understand that we are holding on to him, to his promises, to who he is, to the teachings that's been shared. And when reading this, it, it creates this bond between us and God and, and this bond of a heavenly father and an earthly child, right? Creator and creation. And there's not many bonds like that out in the world, except for maybe one. And that's the bond between a mother and a baby. Which led me to think, what's so special and what makes that bond so close? And there is one um, method out there that doctors use um, and is shared here in an article from Stanford Health regarding this method. Um, it's called skin to skin. And you might have heard it uh, because we're all seasoned veterans and raising families and such. Uh, maybe you haven't heard about it. But this medical uh, method is proven to work. Um, called skin to skin and it, it what happens is the baby is born and from being born they clean the baby off right get get all the the nasty stuff off of him <laughs> that's a part of birthing a child and they hand the baby back to the mom and they rest on each other or um, the baby rests on the mom's chest skin to skin and this is a sweet an intimate moment, right? Like a lot of pictures that I have of all five of my kids being born, except for one, was um, like skin to skin. And just my wife holding our new baby. 
and, uh, and there's many benefits that come from this, okay? And I'm going to read them off. Uh, better able to absorb and digest nutrients. So the things that they will eat from this moment on is, is really they're able to absorb those things easier. Um, cries left less often. Isn't that a great thing? Imagine if they didn't do these things, how much a baby would cry. That'd be crazy. Experience more stable heartbeat and breathing. That's something that's a great benefit. Higher blood oxygen levels, long-term benefits such as improved brain development and functions as well as parental attachment. So they understand and maybe um, are closer and love their parents more by this skin-to-skin -skin interaction. Um, spend increased time in the very important deep sleep and quiet alert um, states. So they're, they're, they rest easy, but if, if they need to awake, they're awakened, right? If maybe they're getting hurt, they'll understand that. And stronger immune systems. Man, isn't that important today, right? Building up our immune systems. And that's just to name a few of things that a baby benefits from a sweet, intimate, moment with their mom how many would benefit right whether graduating going to college again right maybe we're moving homes or maybe you're retiring maybe you're changing jobs in that transition if you spent more time holding on to jesus and his teachings sweet intimate close to close embracing god and everything that he has for us that even through the season, what would carry us in and out of that season, right, would be this relationship with our God. That this bond would hold us to. Benefits that we would receive from scriptures like Jeremiah 29, 11, right, through 14, where it talks about that there's a promise and a future for us. That we, there's a hope for us. That he has a plan for us. That he's not going to just let us go, but that we would seek him with all our hearts. That in prayer, that he would hear us. That he would restore our very fortunes. Because it's very easy from season to season. And we've seen it. High schoolers go and go off to college or they stop um, living under the roofs of their parents, and they walk away from the faith. Why is that? Because our hearts are tended to drift away, and, and because they've now come out from underneath the covering of their parents, they drift away. And so we hope that we would recognize this and that we would honestly repeat the promises of God, that we would pray upon it, also, uh, another scripture I have for you talks to exiles. And exiles has been a major theme for the last six to seven months as we've walked through 1 Peter with Pastor John and we've talked about stand firm in the faith. Paul the Apostle echoes what his um, part, uh, other apostle brother has said as Peter. But Paul says to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians 2.15, he says, So then, brothers, and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Meaning, hey, we, we the apostles, we the pastors, we those that stand before you and present the word to you on Sunday morning or a Wednesday, all right, or in a small group or in a youth ministry, those that stand before you and deliver you, hold up onto those things so that you would be able to stand firm in times of trouble and transition hold on to the promises of god not only that be ready to come in and anticipate god to speak to you let's not show up on sunday going eh, whatever i'm here i made it to church but we would be excited because i'm going to hold on to not just what the pastor is saying, but what Jesus is revealing to me, whether through word or through the, a book, right? Jesus is saying, hey, let's not show up and be weird about it either, right? Like, hey, Pastor John, speak to me right now. Go drop a word. I need something. Come on, speak to me. If you don't speak to me and God's not real. No, but I, I'm in faith, believing that God has something for me today. And I'm believing in faith as someone speaking here to you guys today that God has something special for you. 
And so may we lean into that no matter what season you find yourself going from and going into, that you would hold on to Jesus and the eternal blessings he has for you. And with that, I want to share point two and the other side of holding on. Number two, we are not meant to hold on to everything. We are not meant to hold on to everything. You know, while growing up and even just a year ago, my family, not just, you know, the seven of us, but my entire family, my sisters, my mom, my dad, uh, we were always people that moved. We never owned a home. Uh, we would move from place to place. Every couple of years, we would find ourselves moving. And, and at the end of, as we're moving from place to place, we find that, man, we got a lot of stuff. Like, we just accumulated a bunch of stuff for the few years. And we can't really take all of this stuff with us. Or we really shouldn't be taking all this stuff with us, right? And so we get rid of it. We look through, oh, man, I don't need that. I don't need that. Uh, maybe I might be able to do that. I'm still kind of active. Okay, let's keep that, right? And so we go through our stuff. And on the flip side, there are people that we see in the show, Hoarders, um, even if they're not moving or moving, man, they need to hold on to their possessions and they hold on to it to the point where they don't have money and they got this home and they can't pay, pay for their plumbing, right? And so they end up pooping in plastic bags and keeping them all in their bath, um, bathrooms and because they don't want to throw it away. They don't know what to do with it. So they hoard even um, feces. And, and for some people... For some of us, man, we're holding poop in us. We're holding on to things that we're really not meant to hold on to. We're really not meant to hold on to all the things that life has for us, right? We're not meant to hold on to the lies that someone told us as a junior higher that, hey, you're stupid and ugly and, and stink. And then as we grow up, we're, we still think, oh, I'm stupid, ugly, and stink. I'm stupid, ugly, and stink. I'm stupid, ugly, and stink. And people are dealing with that as adults. Still, from a junior higher, still holding on to this lie. Still holding on to the hurt that it created. Still holding on to pain that someone would deliver. Maybe a family member verbally um, abused us. Maybe physically abused us. And we hold on to that pain like that's who we are. Right. And we hold on to even maybe loved ones have passed away. And of course, we don't want to let them go to the point where we forget them. But maybe the pain that we are going through, we need to be able to grieve well and, and, and allow God to take that from us. But we hold on to it. How about this one? We hold on to the stupid guy who cut us off on the road or the, the lady who was rude to us at the store or the restaurant that didn't serve us well. We hold on to these things, right? We write our reviews, but we think, oh, I'm going to write this review and it's going to be done. No, we hold on to it. And we go from place to place, season to season, right? Transition to transition of life, whether from junior high to high school and high school to college and maybe getting married and now there's another person in our life and now we have kids and now we're grandparents and oh, I went from renting to buying a home and now I'm working to retiring. Holding on to things like that that we were never meant to hold on to. And God is saying, hey, would you be able to give that to me? Maybe it's not even something, would you, Maybe your season holding on to that, right? Like, hey, for a season you're playing baseball and you're playing or softball and you bought your bat. Okay, cool, I had a bat. But when's the last time you played softball? Well, maybe it's time to let it go. Hey, maybe it was a season where you were maturing and yeah, you made some dumb mistakes, but it, it's time to let it go. And God is saying, are you willing to hand that over to me in this season? As you go to this next season, are you willing to let go of those things? Hey, are you willing to let go of foolish, childish things that you did in high school and now have to really lean into growing up just a little bit, right? Just come on, just a little bit. Maybe, maybe those dumb jokes that were really funny in high school really isn't that funny and it's time to grow up. 
right? Maybe it's over and that season is no longer. Let's re read 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7, where it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you or bring you up or honor you, right? Casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. For some of us, we're holding on to these things because in some way it became this sense of pride, pure pride that, hey, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to overcome this. I'm the one that's going to do it. And God's saying, no, you can't. You honestly can't hold on to it anymore. You've been holding on to this for too long. Maybe it's a sin, right, that we had and we've just been holding on. He's saying, are you so prideful that you will not let me take this from you? Humble yourself. Hand it over. And I not only am going to take it from you, I am going to exalt you. Not, why? Not because I'm just some God. I am the God who cares for you. But instead, we still hold on to unforgiveness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Just, I don't want to forgive that person. For a lot of people, and they won't admit it, they don't even want to forgive themselves. You know, I'm, I, I'm a, such a bad kid. I yelled at my parent. And, and I'm not talking about kids. I'm talking about I'm a 30-year-old kid who yelled at my parent. And we don't know how to forgive ourselves. Maybe we're holding on to the lies, like I said, and past hurts. But we were never meant to hold on to everything. And especially those things that go against the promises of God. Especially the promises that God declared for us with the first part we read. We are not meant to carry the things that go against us like the promises of God. And so here, I'm going to play a TikTok video of a professor um, really talking about holding on. Let's take a little. How heavy is this glass of water? Melissa, would you care to answer? Um, eight ounces. 12 ounces. 16 ounces. The absolute weight of the glass doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold on to it. If I hold it for a minute, nothing happens. If I hold it for an hour, my arm will begin to ache. If I hold it all day long, my arm will feel numb and paralyzed. Well, the weight of the glass hasn't changed, but the longer I hold on to it, the heavier it becomes. The stresses and the worries of life are like this glass of water. If you think about them for a little while, there's no problem. Think about it for a little bit longer, it begins to hurt. You think about them all day long, and you'll feel paralyzed, incapable of doing anything. Always remember, put the glass down. Well, thank you, Jesus, man, like, that he is willing to take those things on. Is, like, isn't that great? He says, hey, sometimes we just got to put it down. And for some of us, man, is we're, we're, we're shaking to the point like something's really wrong with us. And all we need to do is like, here, Lord, take this cup of water. Like we need to really uh, recognize the things that we're not supposed to hold on to and let it go. Uh, let me read this last piece of scripture from Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. Solomon shares his heart. It's really, hey, with all our heart, we need to be trusting God. And that's what it's going to take to let go. That when we hold on to him, I'm trusting you to carry me through anything and everything, Lord. Take my right hand with your righteous right hand and take me through everything. And let's read Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Right? Do not forget my teaching. Keep my commandments for lengths of days and years of life and peace, they will be added to you. How many of us need peace added to us? Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him 
and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bone. That in and out of season, from one season to another, transitioning in stages of life and whatever you want to call it, that we would cling to the word of God, that we would cling and hold on to Jesus and his teaching, that we would let go of the things that we've been carrying for too long and that's been weighing us down and that's been messing up us, messing us up on the inside. And, and cause, because what's inside comes out, right? And we sometimes think, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Maybe because you've been holding on to that unforgiveness and and certain sin and you need to be able to confess those things like James says and and you need to be able to walk in the success that God has for us and and, and isn't that why we move on from thing to thing because there's a promise ahead of us that there's a success ahead of us that there is goodness ahead of us that we're leaving something for something better God is saying I have success. I have favor for you with me and with men. What do you do? Man, never forget my teaching. Hold fast to my commandments, right? Stick with love wins, right? Like the actual love, Jesus Christ wins, right? Faithfulness, like all these things right on the heart. Put it in you. Hold on to it. Be about it. Hold on to it. And, and I love that it ended with healing your flesh and refreshment to your bone. Man, He will heal us and restore us to our very bones, to the driest part of our body, right? Our bones. He will refresh them to the darkest places in your heart. To the, to the brokenness, to the places that feel like nothing is within you. He will fill, He will heal, and He will refresh. So as we go through season to season, as we celebrate our graduates that are going off to college or into the workplace, as we find ourselves getting married or getting kids or retiring or having grandkids, right? Or getting a new job or moving from home to home, we would hold on to Jesus Christ as he holds on to us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. We hope that this word would be something that brought healing and refreshment to people. That no matter where they find themselves, whatever season they find themselves, they would be refreshed by you. That they would hold fast to your word. They would hold fast to who you are. They would lean on you and not their own understanding. That they would humble themselves before you and give things over. That they would walk into this new season of life excited about what Jesus Christ is doing in them and with them and around them. May they seek after you with all their heart. May they put trust into you because you are worth it all. We love you, God. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, hey, thank you for letting me speak to you this morning. I'm so thankful that I get to um, bring you this word. And I'm just excited about what God's going to be doing for each and every one of you. And congratulations again to our graduates. So excited for what God is going to do in your life. And of course, hey, take, come back next week. I believe um, we'll have an amazing word from Pastor Renee. And it's going to be an amazing time. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. We love you. See you later.